Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, for today's video, I am doing a get ready with me. This is going to be a pretty chatty video. I'm literally just going to be doing my makeup and my hair with you guys and chatting about some updates. In case you missed it or you didn't see one of my last videos where I explained my journey into motherhood, you may or may not know that I am pregnant with my third kid. So in today's video, as I'm getting ready, I just want to chat with you guys, update you guys, and kind of bring you guys along this journey with me. Um, so if you guys are excited or interested, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and let's get started. All right, so I don't have all that much time. Um, it's currently 10.30 in the morning. I have my daughter trying to take a nap and have my son with me. So I'm gonna do my best to film this video, but also make it very informative and very straight to the point. But I will not be talking about any of the products I'm putting on my face. I'm just gonna go ahead and start getting myself ready for the day. Um, so, like I said, if you guys didn't watch my journey to motherhood video that I filmed a couple weeks ago, like I said, you wouldn't know that I'm currently pregnant with my third child. And that video was very informative and I gave a lot of details as to my journey becoming a mother and kind of my experience and the reasoning behind me being pregnant again, literally within the next year. Of just having my daughter so if you want to know more about my journey you guys feel free to check out that video I can have it tagged um, but basically we found out my husband and I found out that I was pregnant early March and um, I I find out with my pregnancies right away kind of the same thing happens every time I find out pretty much the day of my missed period which is not often common, but I find out pretty soon because I just track my, my, my periods pretty well and I'm pretty regular. And so I find out pretty soon once I am pregnant. All right, so today is Friday. You guys are gonna see this video on Monday. I am 23 weeks pregnant, which I have just entered the sixth month of my pregnancy. I am due early November. So I wanna go over kind of my plans and my first trimester and kind of how I'm going through this pregnancy and how I'm currently feeling and what's going on. So I believe the baby will be here mid to end of October. Like I said, I will explain more um, later in the video why I believe that but I do plan on having like a small baby sprinkle early either late September early October I'm not giving any dates out but that's my plan um, one night God just spoke to me and literally had me searching on Pinterest for a shower or like a sprinkle theme and so I really want to go I really want to go with that theme and have a little sprinkle for this baby um, in case you don't know, I have two kids. I have a almost three-year-old and a one-year-old. And so I don't feel like I need to do a shower. I feel like showers are usually for first-time parents that are, you know, needing a lot of things for the baby, like high chairs, diapers, wipes. Obviously, those are things every pregnancy needs, but like the clothing and the gadgets and all of that, I feel like is necessary for a baby shower. But honestly, for this, I really just want to be surrounded with my family before the third baby comes and um, friends. And I would really just love to do like some games, like baby shower games and raffles. Like that's it. All I feel like we would need would be some diapers because I, you guys, I maybe one day I'll film a video going through my kids clothes or something. But we have so much things and all the things my kids have used since my son, I'm still using with my daughter and I plan to use with this child. And so I don't feel like I need a bunch of stuff, honestly. I try to minimize my living space as much as possible. I don't enjoy having a lot of stuff and clutter and everywhere. So that is the plan. So hopefully I can put that together and everything works out to have a shower uh, or a little sprinkle, a baby sprinkle, at the beginning of October. That's really what I want. But depending on how the, rem the remainder of my pregnancy goes, it might have to be the end of September. We shall see. I will keep you guys updated. 
here I just want to chat with you guys about some of my end uh, or my first trimester um, pregnancy symptoms and so I mentioned I found out I was pregnant early March so my first trimester was from the early, beginning of March until the end of May and so you guys literally all the videos that you guys have been seeing before you find out I was pregnant I was literally pregnant during all those videos so if you ever go back and look at some of those videos of me, um, my, my teacher vlogs, all of those, I'm as raw as possible with how I'm feeling. I literally felt like crap. I felt bad, like headaches, you guys will hear me complaining about, being sick. All of those symptoms that I was having during those videos were because I was pregnant, but you guys just didn't know. Um, and so I dealt with a lot of fatigue, very on and off of nausea, a lot of food aversions my first pregnancy. I felt like I could hardly want to, like I just didn't want to eat anything. Um, I dealt with a lot of, a lot of tiredness, like I would come home from work and literally take naps as I'm feeding my daughter almost every day. Um, headaches, of course, you guys now know my history with my headaches, but I literally experienced headaches and migraines my entire pregnancy. It's like a daily thing that really sucks, but it's just a part of it. I told my husband the other day I cannot wait till I don't have to have any more headaches. Obviously, I still get headaches when I'm not pregnant, but it's way less frequent. I get headaches in the middle of the night. Any time of day, they turn into migraines. It's what else happened in my first trimester? Pretty much that was it. A lot of tiredness, a lot of food aversions, and a lot of headaches. Um, aside from that, during my first trimester, I took my first glucose test, which I passed. Um, if you don't know, the glucose test is where they test you to see if you are high, if you have high, is it diabetes? <laughs> not me not knowing. <laughs> I don't know what the hell the glucose test is. It's basically to make sure you don't have an intolerance to sugar, other high blood pressure. <laughs> I don't know, you guys. I don't want to look it up either, but... I passed my glucose test, which is good, and obviously you have to do it again. And so my second one will be probably in the next month or so. I don't really know. My doctor hasn't told me. But um, I've never had an issue with glucose, like not passing my glucose test, which means like if you don't pass it, that may basically means you have to like be very strict, strict with your diet and what you're consuming, and. Um, I have thankfully not had to experience that and hopefully this pregnancy I do not as well. I'm looking at my notes because I took notes the other day just so I could make sure I cover the most important things in this video. Um, in my first trimester I also experienced vaginal bleeding which was not fun. I had to go to the emergency room because of that. With my daughter, I also experienced vaginal bleeding, but it only ex lasted like a day of like a lot of bleeding, and then it went away. But this time around, I was spotting and bleeding for like over a week, and I did go to the hospital, and I was, I was just told to just take it easy because um, it could turn into a miscarry. And so I was a little worried, but thankfully things worked out. I got out of my first trimester, which is just a huge relief, and I'm aware that you could still miscarry. Um, you could still have a miscarriage after your first trimester, but if you've been pregnant before, you just know that feeling of being in your first trimester, being very vulnerable, nervous, and worried all the time. And so I'm kind of, I was thankful when I finally escaped that first trimester. But let's talk about the second trimester. So I've been in my second trimester now for obviously since June, so over a month, about a month and a half. I mentioned I'm now six months pregnant. And so I would say at the end of June was when I had my second ultrasound visit. Um, and I was so excited for this ultrasound visit. I was like, oh, I get to see the baby. And like, I, w I mean, nothing changed. I was still excited. But during this appointment, we got some unfortunate news that literally had me spiraling for like two days. <laughs> this visit, um, they see the baby is doing really good. The baby's healthy. 
and um, looking measuring perfect or as perfect as can um, but during the uh, it, during the ultrasound they also check my body parts to make sure everything is looking good and when the doctor the ultrasound tech was checking um, my placenta they noticed that it was low so I have a low lining placenta which uh, this is just a lot of information I'm about to give you but it basically just means my placenta is blocking my cervix which is where your baby usually comes out for a vaginal delivery which I am not having but I obviously am still having a c-section which is above your cervix and so they still have to cut you open and get to the baby and so having a low lining placenta puts me at risk for other complications during my delivery and the start of this month I was very nervous and worried about just the delivery portion of this pregnancy and thankfully through prayer and through encouraging friends and family I'm just feeling a lot better at this moment about everything going on and so I am going to give you guys more information right now but let me just finish my eyes off camera and then I will come back and explain the types of issues that come with low lighting placentas. Okay. Makeup is done. This is my this has been my summer look. Oh, if I go anywhere or not really if I go anywhere. This has been my summer look if I get dressed and put makeup on. Um, I'm just gonna quickly do my hair and explain to you guys the details. Okay, so at this ultrasound appointment, my doctor, um, the ultrasound tech had to call in the doctor at the end of the appointment to kind of explain what it was, what a low lining placenta is to me. And at the time it made no sense. Like I literally had the doctor explain everything twice. Because I was just, it was all new information, things I'd never heard about, things I didn't understand what was happening. And so the doctor explained it to me. I literally broke down in that doctor's office because of the severity that it was and how bad it could go for me. And so there's two types of, at least what I know, I don't know, I could be wrong, I'm not a doctor, but there's two types of placenta, um, low lining placentas that can cause complications during pregnancies. One is a placenta accreta, which basically means that your placenta is low, but it's also attached to possibly a previous C-section scar, which can cause um, excessive bleeding, um, which can mean I could have I could bleed to death in that case, or a woman can bleed to death when being cut open to have the C-section. Baby could be perfectly healthy, but mother could die during the surgery. Um, that can also result in needing a hysterectomy, hysterectomy, which is when they remove your uterus, um, because of, because of everything, um, everything going on inside of your body. I don't know the whole, the anatomy and the details of it all, so I'm telling you guys based on what I understand. Um, so that's like the most severe type of low lighting placenta. The other one, from my understanding is a placenta previa, which is where your placenta just happens to be low, but it could possibly move. But if it doesn't move, then there is still complications and um, a whole situation that has to go down during the surgery. So my, at this moment, this is like the end of June when I find, when I find all this out. And so at the moment, my, the ultrasound tech calls in the doctor. The doctor comes to me and checks me and explains everything to me. And from her observation at the moment, she was thinking I had the accreta. So placenta accreta, which is very severe, very nerve wracking, very, just a lot. And so hearing all of that and thinking from this doctor, seeing that, seeing my placenta, where it was located and, and being able to tell me that there's a chance that I have that was very, it was just too much for me to take. So my doctor ended up, um, ordering me to get an MRI so I'm getting an MRI of my pelvic so that they can get more details as to if I have placenta acradia um, which I got my ultrasound thankfully they were able to get me in as soon as possible which was July 3rd I remember it was the Monday before 4th of July I went into the hospital and got my MRI done and got my results at the end of that same week the doctor's office called me and told me I have placenta previa, 
which is so, it was a huge relief. Like all of this is still stressful and a lot, but it was a huge relief knowing that it wasn't a Krata because a Krata had me spiraling thinking I could possibly die. Like literally I was not even looking forward to the de delivery of this child, which was just, it was just really bad mentally for me. And I still have my days, but I'm just thankful and just still constantly praying. over the remainder of this pregnancy and so um having that news makes it's just a huge relief and so um i just i just find it so crazy oh also with the placenta creta and also like all of that as i told you hysterectomy and all that meant i could not have any more children um which I am starting to become okay with, but at the same time, it's still hard to take because my husband and I originally wanted four kids, and then as I've experienced pregnancy, I was becoming okay with having three because my preg pregnancies are not easy. Like, they're hard mentally for me. So, knowing that I have placenta previa, um, I'm going to just take it easy. I am on pelvic rest still. And I am just waiting to go to my next doctor's appointment, which is later this month. And then I see the ultrasound tech again in the beginning of August. And so the, the good thing with the Previa is that my placenta can still move. And so when I spoke to my, my OBGYN after my ultrasound in July, I mean in, at the end of June, he was very hopeful that it was going to move without even seeing the ultrasound so and without even having the MRI results so he was like oh you have a low lighting placenta but there's a possibility it could move and so in my head I was still freaking out based on what the, ultras the ultrasound doctor had told me and so now having these results makes me very hopeful that my placenta will move in time for delivery so that there's no additional complications but you never know what could happen. All I can do is have faith and pray and trust my doctors that they know what's going on and that everything will be fine. So that is my pregnancy all caught up to date, you guys. You guys are now up to date. Everyone knows I'm having my third child later this year, literally in a few months. I am relieved, I'm hopeful, I'm thankful, I'm blessed, I'm all the feelings. Um, I'm just excited to document this and share this with you guys because like I always say, it's a good document and reflection for myself and my family, but also these types of videos can always help people that follow me or maybe they'll find a friend or have a friend or a family member that goes through something similar. So. Alright you guys, so that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys understand and kind of follow through with me during this ex explanation. It was a little hard for me to follow through myself just because, like I said, I'm watching my daughter, I have my son. I'm all over the place already trying to do my makeup. So hopefully I explained everything very well and that you guys got a better understanding of how this pregnancy is going. My first trimester recap and where I'm currently at in my second trimester. And so, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys again for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.